Hi Dexos community! You know, there are a lot of words in the crypto world that confuse or mislead people about the use cases. So in this video, we will go over the most current trend known as Web3, Web4 and Web5 and everything around it. But before I get into the details, I'd like to welcome you to our Dextools Academy, where you always find interesting and educational videos about DeFi and crypto in general. It's also important to note that everything shown in this video is for educational purpose only and not a financial advice. I can't give you financial advice because I'm not your personal financial advisor. So let's start with the basic introduction of what Web3 actually is. Basically, the web has changed a lot over the years and its current applications are almost invisible from its earliest days. Web appearance is generally divided into three categories, Web 1.0, Web 2.0 web, and Web 3.0. But to understand Web 3, you need to start learning from the basics. And the first version of the internet was known as Web 1.0. Most of the participants were content buyers and the creators were web developers who built websites with the information provided primarily in text or image format. The Web 1 era lasted from 1991 to 2004. Web 1.0 is dominated by sites that provide static content instead of dynamic HTML. Data and content was provided from a separate file system because there was little interaction across the sites. Think of Web 1.0 as a read-only website. Most of us have only ever seen the web in its current incarnation called Web 2. Web 2 refers to the interactive web and social networking. It is not necessary to be an engineer to participate in the creative process of the Web 2 world. Many apps are designed to make uh, becoming a creator as simple as possible. You can, for example, come up with an idea and share it with the rest of the world. You can also download the video and distribute it um, to the millions of people who can watch, share and comment on it. Web2 is simple and because of its simplicity, an increasing number of people around the world are becoming creators. In many ways, the web as it is now is fantastic, but there are many areas where we can make significant improvements. And so Web3 was created to address this problem. Uh, there are some key distinctions between Web2 and Web3, but the geographical divide is at the core of both. Web3 developers rarely build and deploy single server applications or store their data in a single database, which is usually hosted and managed by a single cloud provider. Blockchains, decentralized networks of many nodes or peer-to-peer -peer servers are used in Web3 applications. That's so decentralized applications is the term for these applications and you will hear a lot in the Web3 community. Um, then in order to achieve a stable and secure decentralized network, network participants are incentivized and compete to provide the highest quality services to anyone who uses them. Also when it comes to Web3, cryptocurrencies are mentioned frequently. Uh, this is due to the fact that many of these deals are highly dependent on cryptocurrencies. In addition, it provides um, economic incentives, so tokens, to anyone who helps in the creation, management, donation or development of one of the projects. These configurations can provide a variety of services including computing, storage, bandwidth, property, hosting and other web services uh, previously provided by cloud providers. Therefore, people who participate in the protocol can earn a living in various ways, both technical and non-technical. Users um, typically pay to use the service just as they would if they were using Amazon's web service today. Uh, the money is still distributed directly to network participants without Web3. However, in Web3, inefficient and unnecessary steps are removed. And now that you're clear about what Web3 is, let's see what problems it solves and how it is used. Despite the fact that the main features of Web3 are not isolated and do not fit neatly into categories, we have tried to separate four of them for clarity. The first of these is property. Web3, um, for example, gives you unprecedented control over your digital assets. Assume that you are playing a Web2 game. When you buy something in the game, it is associated with your account. If the creators of the game delete your account, you will lose these items. Alternatively, 
If you stop playing the game, you will lose the value of your in-game items. Additionally, Web3 allows direct ownership via NFT. This means that no one, not even the creators of the game, has the authority to take ownership from you. Additionally, you can also sell or trade your in-game items to open markets to recover their value if you stop playing. Then come the decentralized autonomous organizations, the DAOs. In addition to owning your data on Web3, you can also own the platform and it's entirely through the use of tokens that work similarly to shares. DAOs allow you to manage um, decentralized ownership of a platform and make decisions about its future. Decentralized autonomous organizations are technically smart contracts that automate decentralized decision making on a pool of resources. As a result, token holders vote on how resources are allocated and the results of the vote are automatically implemented by the code. In contrast, many Web3 communities are called DAOs. Each of these communities has a varying degrees of decentralization and code-based automation. After these two comes the big investments of cashless startups. As the popularity of Bitcoin grows, entrepreneurs are beginning to put their creative vision into what Web3 transactions will look like. Here's how it will work in practice. To get started, you will go through the standard business process of developing an idea and marketable market. Instead of looking for a seed round, you will establish your cryptocurrency and compel customers to use it to buy your product or your service. This will result in the formation of a decentralized microeconomy around your company. You as the founding team will buy a lot of your coins after you generate the coin, uh, but before you open trading. Depending on how you build your cryptocurrency, buying your coin will be cheap at first. Then you launch. You advertise your business and people who believe you will be successful buy your currency in the belief that it will increase in value as more people buy your product or service. This works like an unregulated uh, seed round of crowdfunding. More coins will come into circulation as more people use their goods or services to buy the utility token. This will result in an increase in the value of the coins you purchased before launch. After gaining some traction, you can get gradually sell your coins to spend on trades as the price rises. This should be done with caution as you don't want the value of your coin to plummet, hurting your early investors. The crucial word here is balance. You also want to keep enough coins so that if the ideas succeed, selling a handful will make you filthy rich, which is what future millionaires will do with Web3. So what do you think? We think it's a good idea for launching projects and running companies in the future. And then fourth and last place comes native payments. Because Web2's payments in infrastructure is based on banks and payment analysts, people who don't have bank accounts or who live in, within the borders of a country less established are excluded. Web3 sends money directly from your own wallet through the browser using tokens like ETH, eliminating the needs for a trusted third party. That was all about why Web3 was created and what it solves. Now you must be wondering that at the moment even Web3 is under development. So what is Web4 and Web5? So let's have a quick and brief overview of them and also what Jack Dorsey thinks of these three innovations. Starting with Web4, we can say that Web4.0 introduces a new network model based on Web3. It also has many features such as smart knowledge distribution, personalized content and more. Web4 services will be autonomous, proactive content exploring, self-learning, collaborative and content generating agents based on fully major reasoning and semantic technologies as well as AI. They will support adaptive content presentation via an intelligent agent that will access the web database. This is also the fourth stage uh, in the evolution of the web. The goal of Web4 is to add more sophistication and intelligence to the web. For example, your software agents that roam the internet or simply reside on your computer could reason with and communicate with other agents and systems to collaborate on your behalf. It is also known as the intelligent web. 
Uh, although Web3 is just an idea that will take time to evolve, Jack Dorsey has a new evolved plan called Web5. Web5's goal is to create tools on the Bitcoin network that not only give users control over their data, but also allow them to control all their interactions on the internet. Web5 returns ownership and control of data and identity to individuals, enabling developers to write decentralized web applications by leveraging decentralized identifiers and web nodes. Now you must be wondering who is this Jack Dorsey guy and why is he so important that he has rocked the entire market with his Web5 platform announcement. So Jack Patrick Dorsey is the 43-year-old American CEO and co-founder of two highly successful technology companies, the first of which is Twitter and the second of which is Square Inc. Jack recently stepped down as CEO of Twitter and is now fully focused on Square, a small business payments company that was founded in 2009 and went public in 2015. Also Jack, like Elon Musk, is a big supporter of Bitcoin and decentralization, so his opinions and statements are important. And now finally, let's get into the future prospect of Web3, because that's the closest thing to happen right now in the current market scenarios with projects running like Brave Browser, StoreJ and LivePeer, for example. Aside from the fact that Web3 has the potential to transcend wallet gardens and return powers into people's hands, these reasonable ideas have been criticized. Many blockchain networks, for example, have a uniform distribution. Instead, many of these principles are owned exclusively by newcomers are backed by commercial investment, meaning that the real power remains concentrated in the hands of a few. The influx of technology carriers like Meta and Microsoft into the Web3 world has raised concerns that it will become just another centralized ecosystem. Finally, Web3 will most likely be developed by a variety of companies uh, working on different products in different fields for different purposes. It is essential to remember that all the promises of Web3 are only one piece of the puzzle. Web3 will almost certainly be built on the foundations of earlier duplicates of the Internet, just as Web2.0 was built on Web1.0. That's the end of the video, but still, if you have any questions about anything related to Web3, Web4 and Web5 and their potential, please mention that below in the comment box and also let us know if you want me to do a video or on any given topic or currency. Now, if you found the content useful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for weekly content like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Until then, bye.